Hello, good evening, and welcome Thursday today. Um, Stamping with Sandra. So tonight, I w I'm sorry, last night I was, um, apologies, I was out and I was hoping to be back in time for nine o'clock. But hey, you've got me a day late, so I don't know who will be um, expecting to join in tonight. But hey, I have my project from last night. Um, I have spent some time over the last, over Easter weekend, um, corralling some scraps. I have got an abundance of scrap card and I'm just trying to reorganize a few things in my craft studio. So it's a good opportunity to do that. And in doing so, I wanted to then go on tonight and show you a little bit of what I've done. Um, so let's get, down, get you down onto the table here. That one, that one, and there we go. Okay, so in sorting my scraps, I used to keep my scraps in Ziploc bags. So they were in in the A4 Ziplocs and all the tatty little bits that were left over, the tiny pieces. Hi, Marilyn. Well done. I'm in the right place. Um, so um, in corralling those, I was finding I, I wasn't using them because they weren't easily found. Hi, Linda. Um, so they weren't easily accessible. And so because of that, there was... Oh, and Joy, we're well, lovely to see you. So I didn't use them. So my friend had shared with me some boxes that she purchased. And I want to just show you a few of them here. These are A5. Um, and I got them from a, um, a company online called Western Boxes. Hi, ladies. Lovely to see you all. The day late didn't, didn't deter you. So these are from Western Boxes. And the ends of these are A5 size. So I have labelled them. And I've punched out the little punch that goes with the um, Alpha Best punch. Alpha Best stamp set. Uh, I've got it over here. I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. But it was the one that goes with the Alpha Best punch. I've been doing a lot with this lately. And I think this is carrying over to the new catalogue. And I honestly think I'm going to have to buy another one. Because if you could see my desk the other side of the table. You would see I've been awfully busy trying to prepare um, some pieces to go out. Some samplers with my customer catalogues. Okay, so this is one piece, and inside that box, I have now got lots of pieces of my scraps. They are in a tray, I can turn this over, and I can pop them in there like so, and they can sit on my desk, and then this is Old Olive, and then I've got Daffodil Delight. So I've got several of them done in the shelves behind me, and you can access things, you can just get in there, find the piece that you want, if you want to punch something out, or matte layer, I can go in there, and they are so nice and easy to find. And there's Daffodil Delight. There's not so many of those. Um, we all have our favourite colours. So these are the colours in some of the colours in the papers that I'm using tonight. I know I've got a couple of big pieces in here. So I'm going to keep these ones out on the table. I picked up that trimmer and then left it just out of reach. And there we go. Um, in fact, let's just do this one as well. Another ink pad. I had somebody here today and I was showing her. So I'm going to take out, to do a whip pinwheel, I'm going to, oh, there's lots of people on there. Hello, everybody. Sorry if I missed your names. Okay, lots to see. So um, I'm going to take out, I know I've got some bigger pieces of the Blackberry Bliss in here. What I'm trying to do is to keep my packets that I keep my card in. Uh, I'm just going to show you here. These ones here, they are document wallets and they are, they've got a little finger hole in the top there. Um, and these are better than the Ziplocs I used to use because they had the zip going across and it pinched the top here so you couldn't actually get your whole sheet of card in easily. You had to kind of like give it a little bit concave to get it in there. These I can have stored on the side and I can literally put pieces in and out on the side as they sit on the shelf and I really love them. So I'm trying to keep less scraps in here and more off the side like this. And in doing so, I can just go in there and grab some pieces I wanted. So because I did this um, ahead of time and I knew that I was going to have some pieces in there, this is going to be my base colour. I'm going to leave that on my table and I'm going to take a couple of these pieces out. We're going to make a simple peel with pin wheel. I haven't done one of these for a long while, um, but the principle is very, very straightforward. I'm going to do it in centimetres because that's what I've kind of sized up for. Um, I'm going to make my base cards at six and a half centimeters so inch people you'd like to see the inches wouldn't you because i know joy's on here so that would be roughly about two and a half inches um but six and a half centimeters for us seven i just thought was that little bit too big to get onto a card so but have, and there's these two pieces now guess where they're going straight back in that scrap tub okay so there's one piece 
And I'm going to cut another piece on here at six and a half centimeters. Okay, make that square. And again, because these are out on the table and not stuffed away in a drawer, in a bag, buried at the bottom somewhere, I can put them straight back in my tray and then the lid will go on that when I finish and that can go back on the shelf. Are you proud of me for being organized or trying to get organized? So that's those two. Um, I'm gonna bring you in just a little bit more actually. You can come down to the table a bit more so you can see what I'm doing. There we go, without it running away with me. So that's those. Um, and then I'm gonna to go to my paper scraps. Now, I know I've only just posted it up there, but these are some papers that I have used um, I've used a little bit. These were the host papers. So if you held a party, you could get these, earn these as a free item if your order was over £150. So I always have lots of scraps in here. And I want to kind of contrasting papers. So leave those at the top of my desk. I have got a sample here with um, two colours. They weren't quite as contrasty as I would like. So I'm going to take some of these out and see what I can find. But they are using up pieces of like the yellow you'll have to shout if you want to put some comments on here as which ones you like um i have got smaller bits and bigger bits there's all sorts in here so just trying to find what's there so these are some oddments they're quite pretty i do love the purple but i don't want that one to be that's quite predominant on there i don't want that dark um petal pink type color i like this one actually that's going to go quite nicely with that. Don't worry about the size yet. So we'll use the stripes. So that's one. And we want something to go with the stripes. The yellow might go nicely because it's totally different. Stripes and stripes won't go. So stamp the dotty blue one. Where was the dotty blue one? Not that one, was it? Oh, this one. That dotty blue one. Ah, Ruby, I need someone to get me organised. Joy, we're a long overdue a catch up. We need a chat. I think that's going kind of going away from my colours. I think I'm. That's quite nice. That's a contrast, isn't it? Do you like those two? Hi, Rebecca. Nice to see you here. So I'm going to use the stripes with my Blackberry Bliss. I'm going to use that one. So go with what would you like as a contrast? Would you like that one as a contrast or that one as a contrast? Okay, and I'll pop these away out of the way. I'm just using the scraps tonight. That's all I wanted to do. We've got, ironically, we've actually got some pinwheel type effect for a pinwheel card. But you're not going to see much of this. You're going to have tiny little pieces on there. So I don't know whether that one would work. And we've got the green on the back of that. That won't work. So, yep, you like those ones? Top. The top one, this this top one here. I think so. Anybody else? Yep, top. The dotty blue one. There's kind of got a bit of blue in the top one. Okay, well done, ladies. Okay, so let's go on the floor between my table legs. So my sizes on here. I'm going to talk you through how I use my template. I like my grid sheets. Demonstrators, don't curse me, but I do like my, my, my mini. My, these are the, the grid papers that go with the Stamparatas. Um, and they're a handy size, and I do use these a lot. So I've taken my six and a half centimeter square, and I've drawn around this. So once in the um, in the turquoise pen, and once in a red biro. Okay, so I've got two pieces going there. So these two pieces, this is the two at six and a half. So I use these on here. These are very good when you're doing the stamping um, on the stamparatus, and you're going round and you're changing your card round to the different points. So that is for stamping. Same principle, but I'm going to lay one on there like so. And I'm going to grab my Tombow and I'm going to go round. We don't want to go over those edges. So I'm going to go round like a hexagon, really. So there, 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 there and there. OK, so you can kind of see that roughly. And then the dot in the middle. OK, are you keeping up with me? So that one holding that one in place. I'm going to place this one where I drew around the other one. Like so. OK. So I'm now on a mission to get these scraps in my, my caddies down. The real red seems to have a problem because real red I had to put in two caddies. Okay, I want that to be short term. So you will see me using those a lot more now because I just think they're the bee's knees, they're the way to go. So then once we've got that shape in our hands, we need to cut eight pieces at three centimetres. Now, 
that doesn't have to be, if you've got scraps, it's just showing you how tiny your scraps could be. But if you're using, I don't know what the size this is. It's a bit the wrong way. This is a bit too long for my trimmer. So I'm just gonna have to grab my scissors and just take a piece off there today. That will be, in fact, look, let's do it this way. I'm gonna take three centimeters off there. Oh, yeah, three centimeters, line that up on there, nice and straight, and then turn it around and do a three centimeters as well. It's just underneath that trim. I can see it there, I hope you can too. Just trust me, it's gonna be a square. So there's one square, okay, and now this, I'm not sure about that yet. It might be too small to do anything with. Still a little bit too big to get in that track. So I'm gonna pop that back on there on the three centimeter, that second one. And three centimeters. There we go, there's two. Now we'll get in there. So now we can come down the rest of the row. So I'm gonna do three centimeters down, keeping those nice and straight all the way down. Discard that piece back into the pocket, down there. And turn this and cut two more. So I like to go six. If I was doing this on a bigger trimmer, I would have one length and you've got a piece long enough. I would start at 12 and then you've got four lots of three. Just a little bit of simple maths. Okay, so then we've got another three centimeter. Okay, there. So we've got four squares of that pattern. Get those out of the way. And I'm going to have the same on this one. So if I do a length of six, cut it by three, and twice, that piece out of the way. So you are using up scraps. It's coming to the end of the catalog, as we all know. Um, the last chance list is still around, it's out there. So I've got two of that pattern now. Just make a little pile of them, look. Are you keeping up? And then I'll do another piece at six centimeters. Okay, that can go back in the packet. And then by three, straight line. And then another one. So that's gonna be our patterns. Okay. Now. Considering they're scraps, they're just pieces, I'm not cut into really big pieces, um, it is quite kind of um, economical. And these are something, it's one of those things, I'm trying to clear up now at the end of the catalogue, I would like to just sit and make loads and loads of them, just to um, just to get rid of all my, my oddments. You see, you could, use, on another card, I could use that one with that one, okay? But I want, I don't think that's prominent enough with the, the Blackberry Bliss. So this time we will give that a miss. I'm going to use these on the very first one. I'm only putting the adhesive down one side. Okay, we're going to work around in the pinwheel. You know what? I'm going to turn that over. No, <laughs> maybe leave it upright. You've got the Sharpie has bled through. Um, so this is the side I've got the adhesive on. We're just going to start anywhere, wherever you want it to be. And we're going to leave a little bit of a gap. So this piece here, is loose okay so I'm going to stick that half down and now we're going to go around alternating okay now when I alternate I like to have my stripes coming inwards so I will do the same I'll keep turning this around each time okay and now these can all be completely stuck down and there we go you see look on the back of that one we've got another nice pattern we've got the kites on the back of that I'm just going to bring you up a bit I had this problem last week uh, last time didn't I if I bring that down towards me, I won't be leaning so far away from the table. There we go. Okay, so this is going to come in from that way. Uh, no, the next square along, this one. I nearly went wrong, didn't I? Now, because it's got Blackberry Bliss along there, I'm going to turn that round. You can find the best piece that you would like to have on the outsides of your card. If you've got Blackberry against Blackberry, it kind of distorts the shape a little bit. Okay, turn it again. And I'm going to have another one of these. Just alternating, simple alternating. Okay. And that one's going to come on there. Turn it again. Pick them up off here. And some more Tombow on the back. Can you see these, if I keep doing the same way, it's going to give it a little bit of variety. So you haven't got some stripes going one way and some going another. I'm turning it again, and another piece, in there, just leaving that little border around the edge, just like you would on a matte layer on a card. 
a pink on the outline there, so this one's going to be yellow, daffodil. And so turn it again and come on there. Okay, and then turn it again. We're back to this one. And that square. Okay, and then turn it on the last one. And remember that we've got a flap under here that's not stuck down on the outside edge. We're going to have this one in here. Slide that off the table. Okay, so it's going to come along that edge. The stripes are always going to go that way. So I'm going to tuck this underneath that other piece. So in order to have a proper pinwheel, you need to tuck that last one underneath. So I'll just turn it that way for now. Maybe it was stuck down a little bit too much. Oh dear, lift that up a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. Maybe I stuck that slightly a little bit too far over. Tuck that one into the corner there. So I've got that same little border that the others have got. Pop that one down. And then this last piece under here, we're just going to add some Tombow on the back. Okay, that's the little edge that we didn't stick. Okay, and there is our cute little pinwheel. Now that does need an embellishment in the middle of that card. So I've got a little bit of Tombow just sticking out the side there. That should be good. Okay, so I don't like this middle piece. We have to have something in the middle. So to do that, I'm going to grab my stamps that I've had out on the table. I really, really love. Um, and because, because we've got scraps on the table, we're going to come back in here. I just want something to be able to stamp and punch a little flower. So I think that would do fine. You're going to be really impressed with me using up those scraps now from going forward. Okay, so this little flower is from Petal Park. I have used this online with you before. Now, I want to show you a little trick. You can, with a dark card, this is very dark actually. I might just pick out a, a Daffodil Delight for this one. Daffodil Delight is a very pale shade. This might be too dark, you'll see why in a sec. I have got, um, where can I go? I've got daffodil out with me, but I'm going to teach you a little trick. So I have got this stamp inked up. This is the outline. Um, I, you can use the inside and the outside on these. Um, tonight, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you some different ways. I'm going to use Versamark. Now, this is a clear ink. So you can see me just tapping that on the corner of my Versamark. And then I'm going to stamp in the corner here. Okay, just like so. Hold it down for a few seconds. Okay, and then lift that off. That will dry and that will form a little, a darker shade on there. And then I'm going to show you the other side. Um, it kind of works really with the in-betweeny colours. Let me see if I can do a green one. I don't want to use the green, but I want to show you a variety. Okay, I'll use that little scrap on that one. Small enough, there we go. So if I now do it on the old olive, that's kind of an in-betweeny mid-colour, mid-depth. Okay, and just stamp that on the bottom. Okay, and can you see, it's easier to see on that one. Can you see there's a watermark? Now I've stamped that in a clear ink pad. Versamark is something you'd normally use for, um, for your embossing, your heat embossing, and sprinkle your powder over the top but it can give you a watermark effect. Now, if I was then gonna turn this round, I've finished with this for now, I just, I will do one on there just to see how the dark one shows up. So you've got three. Okay, not so much at the moment, you can just see that on there. That, that one's, those ones are better. This one's better, I think. Um, and because it's a clear ink pad, all I'm gonna do is just stamp that off on here. And then grab my old olive ink pad. So old olive card and old olive um, card and ink pad. So if I ink that up now on there and stamp you another one in the opposite corner. Okay, that is a really strong effect. And that one on there is a really strong colour. This one here is if you wanted it as a watermark. Can you see the difference on there? Okay. So you can see you can actually get totally different effects. So one with just a clear ink pad 
and I've been using that a lot um, recently um, just to give it a watermark, just to give that pale colour. The new in colours, sadly I haven't got one of the new shades um, that was missing out of my order because the box was broken, um, but I was making do by using this on the new card. Okay, so two different alternatives there. Don't really want green in the middle of that, but they were three of the colours in that suite of papers I just wanted to show you. So now if I clean that, the chamois is over here. that one clean that off and then do the same with blackberry bliss we'll see which one we're going to like best okay so that that end's got the watermark and then this one has got the blackberry i'm liking the darker colors and i think the dark has got to have this one i just wanted to show you the differences there so that you can see how it can look so again this one you wouldn't really know the difference on there got to bring it really up close there is the watermark that is the versamark end okay and this is the ink end does that give you enough comparison so you can see what I'm, I'm just trying to show you so this one is just watermark versamark and that one is with the ink pad not much difference at all on the yellow there clearly is a difference because you can hardly see the other one it's in fact that has kind of yeah that's we just did the watermark on that one didn't we on the corner there and then the greens were a dark and a light. Okay, so you've got a variety. You just need to try it really on your cardstock and see which one you like best. So I'm just going to grab the punch for this one. So I think with the colours we're using, I think this is just going to look really nice in the centre there. I've got to put my glasses down to be able to see. Okay, and I need to line up. This punch is not symmetrical, so you need to just line that up um, where you want it to be gently pinch it I'm just got my head in the way sorry because it's a dark color okay and I'm just going to pop that one out I'm going to do Sandra's trick with the um, colors are on there and just my knuckle okay and then just bury that in my hand if you've got dexterity problems then use the the rounded end of a Tombow okay you can use that on your stamp and pierce map okay that gives it the same sort of effect and that by putting that in the center that will just finish it off and we'll pop a gem in at the end but I want to mat and layer this first so I'm going to pop that over there to one side okay so now we're going to make our cards so if I move those on top of my scraps and then we'll crack on so I'm going to use the blackberry bliss and then I want to use the colors that are in there the other thing I like about pack, um, my card being in here is on the back You've seen me do this before, but if I have a, when I cut a piece of card in half, I always leave the second one in the back. So there's usually another card. A lot of them have cardstock in the back of them. Okay. And then we're going to have a matte layer. So we'll use the yellow and then we've got some white as well. So I'm just going to do some nice layering on here. And I'm going to have this one at our 14.3 layer just to show a hint of the um, edge are you still there are you keeping up with me okay another little scrap that will go back in that yellow box leave that on there see that will go straight in their homes i'm really pleased because this is going to work this is the first live that i've done sorry let's get you back on screen since i've had a tidy this week so that's going to go on there like so Okay, and then just line that up in the middle. You know me, I would normally um, gut the middles of these, but that's going to stay as it is tonight. Oh, are we for time? Very good. That's my last piece of that. I haven't done the whites yet. Look, the whites are still all in here. That's next on the list. I'm nearly there with all of them. Um, so then I'm going to come down another half. So I'm going to take this one down to uh, nine and a half. If I do, yeah, you're still here. Well done. So this is 13.8 by nine and a half. Okay, now, the other thing we could do here is grab an embossing folder. We could decorate the back of this with some stamping, some texture. 
we could um, pop it through the embossing folder. So I will just grab an embossing folder and the big shot of the cut and emboss machine. But what I wanted to show you, the sneak peek tonight, just looking for where I put it, <laughs> in front of me, very visible or not. Three stacks there. I was struggling to find it and then I did find it. And now, <laughs> here it is, under my trimmer. Okay, this is another new set that I think you are going to like. This is in the new annual catalogue. So it's called Crafting With You. Okay, and I love the sentiments on here. So life is better when you're crafting. Sending you a handmade hug. You inspire me and with love. I just think there's some lovely words in there. Hi, Jean. Loving the organisation. Yes, Linda, I'm very proud of myself. I really am. It's a long, long, long overdue job. Um, so I've got this one on the Stamparatus already, that life is better when you're crafting. So I'm going to grab that one. Stamparatus is in front of me. Okay. And I need to reposition it. So I need to clean this because I've been doing some other stamping today. So I'll just clean that with my chamois. And I'm going to dry that off on my grid mat. On there. Okay. And then pop it into the corner. I'm going to place this piece in the corner here. And I want this the pinwheel. I've lost my pinwheel. There. My pinwheel is going to kind of go on here. It's up to you whether you want the point at the top or whether you want to have it on the hood like that. I think I like the, the points, but it's a case of which points. I kind of like it that way, I think. Okay, so if that's going to be placed there, I want this greeting to be at the bottom here. So I'm going to just line that up nice and straight. Try not to get my head in the way. Okay, take that out of the way. Magnets holding it in place. Okay, I think I'm good with that. Pick up my, um, my stamp. It's deceptive when you've got this on there like that because it does look like it's kind of going uphill, but it's not the case at all. So I'll stamp that one on there. Stamp on that. Okay, I will make that a little bit darker. I think this might need re-inking. Darker colours need a little top up. Okay, and there we go. A lovely, crisp, even stamping on that. It's lovely. So I'm going to leave that on there. That can sit on there for now. So just quickly map these layers together. My Tombow. Around the outside edge. Dot in the middle. Nice and quick. Very, very little adhesive. And I need to put you back on the map, don't I? So you can see. It's a dark mat and a dark colour. Let's bring you back. Okay, so that's on there now. Then this one, if we wanted to put that on through the, the um, cut and emboss machine, I'd just go and grab that because I think we could put a nice um, quilt in there. So you've got my noisy slippers on here. So I'm going to pop that one on there and then we have the embossing mat. I'm going to pop this through the time-worn type. It's one of my favourites. You've seen me use this a lot. Okay, move everything out of the way. Pop that in there like so. Now obviously because I've already stamped this it won't affect the embossing. If you pop the um, if you've textured it first and then try and stamp on it, it won't work. But then you could always fussy cut your greeting around that and pop that on separately. So I'm just going to pop that in there now. Not that we know of, Anne. No, I don't think that's necessarily on the cards. Uh, it is a big shame. It really is. But I can chat to you when you're here in a few weeks. So there's my texture and you can see the greeting still stands out nicely but the texture is underneath it. So this is time worn type, beautiful embossing folder. Now the other thing I want to show you is that your pinwheel, you can texturize that as well. So I'm going to do one here that I made earlier 
all right, just to test, test out my measurements. And I just want to show you how this would look if you wanted to pop that through as a texture. I would work out how you want that to sit on your card first. So whichever point you want at the top. These ones weren't particularly straight, you know. I'm going to go that way. Um, this is also called, it's called quilting. When you've got a design and then you run it through your embossing, you can texturize the whole thing. So when you've got lots of little pieces stuck on, this can actually texturize the whole thing. So don't look at this one too closely because it's, like I say, it's not so straight, but it's actually got the texture on there. Can you see that? Okay. That you won't see the detail on it. You will see the textured elements on there. I think if I bring that up, you can see that. So I think I'm going to do that on this one. I've buried it now underneath, haven't I? There it is. So I think we'll do this on here because these are planar patterns. So I'm going to pop that in back in there. And I'm going to do the... Mm, that way on, I think. I'll do the stripes going across. Look at that way. Okay, and my pad there. There we go. I can run that through. Loving the colours. Yeah, the colours, uh, they are one of the... Um, you know I love Blackberry Bliss. When they disappeared a few weeks, a few years ago, I wasn't happy. Um, so glad to have it back. and so glad that it's made it over on the colour revamp. Okay, so that has got texture on it now. My new piece has got texture on it. Nice even borders. Okay, and then we're going to pop that on there. So let's stick this one down. So just got a bit of continuity with our patterns. We've done the sentiment already. We've got a gem to finish off the little middle hole. You need to mend that hole, the, the middle join, um, because it just needs that little something. Okay, so go in there like so. And then this, I think I want to raise that. It's very, very matted. It's knitted all of those layers together. So where you've done the Tombow, it knits all of that together quite nicely. But it does need some dimension on there. Okay, so get the dimensionals out. Okay, I'm going to put this on the back. I'm just going to take a sip of water. Just one in each corner and one in the middle. Okay, so it's nice and firm, nice and secure. Just looking for a little bit something different. And when I was messing about with all those scraps, I was quite ruthless. I do have a team member who has a sister I can offload real scraps to for the play school. They are always looking out because of budget constraints. They're always looking out for craft material. So I do donate there. And also the primary school Anna goes to, if um, I've got anything to go there, they will, if they can't use it in the primary school, they will pass it down to the preschool here in the village as well. So there's my little flower. Okay, that can go in the center. Or we could grab a big gem. Um, my gems are here. I haven't got, I've got some purple ones in here. I've got pearls there. I've got some lilacs, but I think it's going to be the wrong shade of lilac in there. So the pink, I don't know if the pink, the pink one might work nicely actually. Look at that pink. How about that pink one in the center of there? These looks like they've slid a little bit. You can grab one of those out. Pop that one in the center. Oh, that looks nice. I do like that. Oh, and Smudge is coming to say hello. I just heard a little meows. So there we go, that can go in there. Just to finish off that, where the join, where they all come in the centre. There we go. I like this idea. I certainly got lots of scraps. I know, you see. Lots of scraps. Oh dear. It seems to blend the pattern. It does blend. It knits it together, Anne. It really does. It's where you'd normally have little pieces kicked up. And this, that's the reason I'd say to use the wet glue, the Tombow, over um, tape. When you get tape, you can sometimes, when you can feel a ridge on them. So I wouldn't use tape. I do like Tombow, especially if you're going to quilt like this. Um, and if you are a quilter as well, if you do sewing quilting, then um, that's just a nice little technique for you. So there you go. And there is my finished card. Bring it up to the camera. Can you see all those textures in there? So it's texture on here, texture on the, um, on the wheel. 
the greeting was stamped first before I embossed it. But if you wanted to, you could actually, you could have a greeting going through the center. But can you see just by eight little squares of card, of paper, and two squares of card, you can, I got so many scraps there. <laughs> I've got loads to use up. So yeah, you'll be seeing a few of those, I'm sure. Okay, so, and the greeting on there. I like that, but I think another time I might do that separately and fussy cut round the outside and stick it on as a little layer perhaps. But I like the fact that this is the feature. The pinwheel is the feature, okay? Not the sentiment, but it looks nice and it stands out even though it's been embossed, okay? So I hope you like that. Lots, lots of lovely comments on there. Thank you, ladies. You don't use your embossing folders enough. Hey, embossing folders are the bee's knees. Look, I'm going to take that off and put you over there. There you go. Come back to me. Yeah, I love my embossing folders. They're one of the, the, the first things I look at in the catalogue. Um, they provide instant um, texture. Um, for quick cards, you run it through a layer through an embossing folder and a tiny little embellishment on it in your way. Okay, nice simple cards, simple clear designs, really good. Okay, yes, a weekend project to try, Linda. Yes, oh Claire, thank you, very effective. It's really good, and it's one I hope you try. If you do try, please. I don't think you can. You can't add attachments onto Facebook. Those of you watching on Facebook, I think we um, on YouTube. I think we had one on there earlier. I think we've got Joy was on Facebook uh, on YouTube, but on Facebook, if you want to put your um, share yours in the thread underneath, then please feel free. Have a go. Any papers, whatever you're using up of your scraps, I'd be so chuffed. And remember, if you need the link for these boxes or find something similar, I would have loved to use our stamp cases because I like to keep... Um, where's my stamp set here? Where that stamp set is, you'll see that there's a considerable... Oh, let me get you back down on the table. You'll see there's a considerable difference there in the thickness. These cases just weren't enough. I couldn't get hardly anything in those, so I couldn't use our Stampin' Up! ones. Um, but the bigger ones, the A5, they, they are bigger. The bigger in size all over, look. You can see you've got all this extra and a lot more thickness. It was an investment, but it's going to be proved to be a very good investment because I'm going to use them. I can bring them to the table now, quite neat and tidy, and they're there. Um, the other thing I was going to just show you was, you need boxes. We all need boxes in our lives. Yes, absolutely. Um... I'm not going to, uh, am I giving the game away? Possibly am. Um, the reason I've nearly um, uh, worn this punch out is because I've been going through, in the process of tidying that and putting those away in the boxes, labelling them, etc. I've been prepping um, actual card samples for the um, catalogues to go out with my customers in their catalogues. Okay, so I've got one, I've done it a little bit differently this year and I've got one of the this design. And just bring it on square. Where are you? And oh, I can't work this back to front. It's easier down on the table. Look, uh, I'm going square there. Where do we go? And so I've used one of those for each of those designs. And they've got all the colours in there as well as to how to. It's on the corner there. Um, with the cardstock colours. Okay. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello from Arizona. Hi, Francis. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've used on those um, little samples this time instead of the bookmarks. So that's that's been really good. I have been busy, and guess what? <laughs> I have also got through a lot of these, the little jam jars, the little mini jam jars. Okay, I have them all laid out. The behind my camera here, I have got some in in jam jars and some just in piles next to them. They are all laid out the same as that chart. So I've still got a lot more to do, um, but there's, some of them will be going in the post tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, so that I've kept you long enough tonight. Um, where are we? 30, oh, that's not, that's not too bad, actually. I was a little bit late starting. Yes, very busy. That was my um, Easter weekend um, because people have family and doing things, and we had quite a quiet weekend. Um, and yeah, so it's good. So um, don't forget to put your samples in the pack. If you make that pinwheel um, and quilt or anything like that, then please pop your photos down in the, in the comments below um, or send them to me and I can post them for you. Okay, so lovely to see you all again and I will be back as usual on Sunday evening. Okay, so take care 